Steve now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower. It's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 468th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my spectacular co-host. We've got, uh, yeah, actually, there's no order here. We've got the magnificent, as always, Seth Vilo. Aw, thank you. Uh, and we've got the magnificent, as sometimes, Linian. That's not incorrect. F. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Put F's in the chat, fam. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the People's Union of Civil Liberties. I mean, the Pokemon Underground Champions League. Uh, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007. And a Twitter handle we will hold on until we die. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll t- we talk everything Pokemon here from the video game to the trading card game to everything in between. The cereal at Walmart. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, we got it. I said, so like... So for those of you at home, there is another Puckle um, that is older than us in spirit called the People's Union of Civil Liberties. It's like an it's like a, a group in India for civil rights. I don't know if it's actually like a good group or not. We haven't. <laughs> have not done near the amount of investigation you would hope we have. People keep tagging us, asking us questions that don't apply to a Pokemon yeah, we get, podcast. Yeah, we got, we got, we got tagged in like we keep getting tagged in like groups of people now. Because like the people, the, the problem is you have like these like uh, like these activists that aren't good at being activists. <laughs> and what they do is they just type in at Puckle because they're thinking of the People's Union of Civil Liberties, and they just click every tag that's underneath there on Twitter. And of course, we pop up. At Puckle Podcast. And so they tweet at us. Um, and so this has been going on for years. This isn't a new phenomenon. Uh, but th- what is new is I've decided to start responding to them. Uh, <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, uh, well, like they had one with like a picture of like 10 people. I have no idea who they are. Um, and they, like we got tagged in it. And I'm just like, which one of them is the Pokemon podcaster? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy and the guy responded. <laughs> Oh, God. The guy responded to me, uh, Puckle stands for the People Union of Civil Liberty. You should change your name. And then I looked at when we created our handle on Twitter and when Puckle created its handle on Twitter. And we did it first, like four years earlier. <laughs> we, <laughs> we've had a Twitter handle called, Twitter handle for like since 2009. We've had our Twitter handle. And uh, the People's Union of Civil Liberties needs to catch up. Uh, they made theirs in 2013. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and then uh, at Puckle is apparently taken, but it wasn't taken at the time that we took at Puckle Podcast, which confuses me. I don't know what past me was doing. Um, it would have been nice just to have at Puckle, but it's taken and it has zero tweets on the account. Oof. Yeah, big oof. F's in the chat for that one. But yeah, that's a fun. That's the fun. That's the fun giggle story that happened this past couple of weeks. I I almost <laughs> accidentally I almost accidentally got into a Twitter fight with some Indian author about justice. Oh no. I, I did. I just. I was just making a joke. Like, hey, maybe just like look at the things you tag before you tag them. You know, that's all. That's all I'm asking. Uh huh. Oh well, here we are. <laughs> but apparently, we should change our name. And it got really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> got really aggressive. I. I. I don't. Yeah. That. That's my. That's my time on Twitter. Um. Follow at Trader Thatch for more shenanigans like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never. I'm not. Ne- I don't. I don't want to reply to those anymore. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pokemon wise, I haven't done too much. Uh, I did my. I did my gym team. Uh, I've been more enamored and Linian probably as much as I have with uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that dropped this week for D and D. That came out this. W- I mean, I know it came out this week. I have not looked at it really. Oh, I. I looked at it with Shamu. I looked at it. I guess you've been. You're. You're in school. You had. School I can things. be a B rider. Well, I had a there was yes. a combi- there was a combination of things for me uh, that made me not do basically anything this week. Uh, I've been like in midterm paper hell, and every free minute I've just been plugging my ears with my earbuds and just listening to Rhythm of War, which is a book that I have been very excited about. That's true. That I, also I, came out on the same day. It yeah. did, and um, I glanced through Tasha's because someone sent me a, a PDF because I haven't got a physical copy yet. I've got it on D&D Beyond, so it should be shared with you if you just want that. 
Yeah, but I've been looking through it, and it all seems super cool. Um, mm-hmm. I, do, I don't have any major uh, complaints. I really want to play... I've got a bunch of backstories that have come to me, but I want to play the bar- the like the shapeshifter barbarian. Yeah, well, it's not even like full shapeshifting. It's like uh, the barbarian gets like claws or teeth. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be like a werebeast, but yeah, the yeah. the backstory in air quotes here that I that I wanted to that I want to play for this is uh, a, a dude who's just experimented on. So when he rages, it's just like random chemical things. <laughs> So like one day he just good. gets a bladed tail, and there he is a tabaxi with you know con and strength now because that's a thing. But if anyone ever asks him, he'll go, "What's a tabaxi?" So who knows <laughs> what happened to him? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm pretty excited for it. One day I'll yes. be able to play in a game, I'm and I'll be able to build a bees. You could do <laughs> yeah, that. Swarm Swarm Lord sounds really cool. I'm doing it. Uh, they they fixed all Ranger. my campaigns. Oh, they they fixed Ranger, Ranger, which was really cool. But I don't. Yeah. It was. It's a good book. My very first RPG character back when I was like thirteen. I was in middle school. Oh, uh, it was in three point five, and it was a soul knife. Mmm, those are back. And they're back. And a, a dinosaur story. I'm very excited. They're back. Ah, uh, all right. So, well, this is a Pokemon podcast. I just wanted to mention that because that's what I've been working. On. <laughs> uh, that's what I've, I've been, been exploring working. Exploring the Roshar region. Uh, <laughs> I've been just reading Tasha's Cauldron of everything and having a good time, and uh, that's that's been my life. I want to get. I, I really want to. The thing that I realized is like I'm a gym leader in in Fall League, so I did my gyms this week. Oh, by the way, if you want to do Fall League next week, because my gym time's on Thursdays, and there happens to be this holiday on Thursday called Thanksgiving. What? So I will not be available that day. So my gym time's moving to Monday, November twenty third. Uh, so the day this comes out um, at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Just for those of you who want to want to battle me, then I think that we'll have another week of badge collection after that, and then we'll be done. I'm very excited. Oh, the other. Oh, we did work on some puckle stuff this week. I'm actually really excited about it. We we came up with. Uh, so for those of you who have been with puckle for a very long time, this I guess I'll announce it because it's really cool. If you if you've been with puckle for a very long time, you know that every year since like 2016, except for this past year, we've done a giveaway in December called the Puckle Advent Calendar. Um, and what that is, is every day in December leading up to Christmas, so December 1st through 24th, there is a giveaway that's going to be happening on Puckle. I'm very excited because we actually sat down and figured out every single Pokemon that's going to be given away. And we've got that ready. I think we just need like some assets and it's ready to go. I'm very excited. So it starts on December 1st. And I guess this is a good time to say that it gives people a week to, to like really figure it out and be like ready for it we've also got some surprises to go along with it that i'm very excited about as well i like it's gonna be more than just like the standard like hey here's 24 pokemon Mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, of course patrons get like some special stuff on top of that as icing and uh but everybody can have some access at some like super secret pokemon too i'm very excited about that like more excited than i should be (laughs) like I'm, i'm uber excited about it it's gonna be a good time but yeah i'm Advent calendar made me very happy putting that together this year. Um, we made it good this year, by the way. I think I think there's like one whiff out of 24. Because like every once in a while we want to be Mimi, but I was very good about not making us Mimi this time. So uh, we do not have a Palmon. <laughs> All right. So on that note, <laughs> let's uh, let's kick it on over to the news. Cue that epic music. <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, we have a lot of things to talk about, kind of. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true or not, but I'll, I'll let Linnea start us off. Uh, it's some, some general news. We've got Original Stitch uh, has released four new designs of Pokemon shirts to tie in with the secret of the jungle Pokemon. Uh, the designs are Shiny Celebi, which looks fine. Zarude, which has a pretty good pattern. Cramorant. The Kramer one is probably the coolest. That's the star of the show. It actually looks great, and um, for some reason they also did Squavit. Why not? Who doesn't, doesn't love Squavit? No, they didn't Everyone. have why not. Also, uh, 
just to throw in on this because it's not on our list and I get their emails, they also have bandanas for the original 151. Oh, bandanas are kind of cool. Yeah, and in these I'm unprecedented into that. times. I, well, yeah. I'm just into the idea of bandanas in general. I'd wear them on my head, not on my face. Yeah, but yeah, uh, they did that for the original 151. That way I look super cool when I ride my motorcycle. Yeah, totes. You know, I just, I want to look super cool when I ride my motorcycle, like Uncle Jesse from Full House. Or like those <laughs> roughneck trainers that you see. <laughs> uh, the English language release of uh, the most recent Twilight's ep- Twilight Wings episode, Gathering Stars, is now available to watch. Pro ZD did uh, the voice of Mustard. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> which is cool. Pro ZD's like, he gets to do voices in a bunch of random things. I know, I love it. And it, he always, you can never, you can almost never tell in the moment because his range is insane. Yeah. Someone show, yes. you're amazing. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. So he did mustard, which is kind of cool. Uh, the only other thing is, I thought it was a kind of disappointing episode, but. Uh, <laughs> they imply the, the player character, and that was like the only interesting that happened. That, yeah, it wasn't an interesting episode at all. Like, I, I think the other ones I was more enthralled by than that one. Because it kind of added to the lore, but this one was just kind of like, hey, Pokemon has an expansion pass. The, the, I mean, it was, that one felt like an advertisement more so than the other ones. It really did, especially when they went to Crown Tundra and then just held on all the birds just long enough for you to see them as marketable. Like, exactly. It felt like that one felt like a commercial. Uh, I, which felt kind of bad. I, I didn't like it as much. I, I don't know. I also, like, I really want to know, like, the real attach rate numbers for, for the expansion pass of Sword and Shield. It's got to be really high. It's got to be insane. Like, who are they trying to sell it to at this point, right? Like, <laughs> people who didn't buy the original game, I think. I guess, yeah. I mean, that's what you have to do because they did just come out with that pack that makes you spend an extra penny. I hate when they, uh, whenever they do that, by the way, I really, really hate when they like combine things and they're just like, well, it should still have the 99 cents at the end. But if you buy the two things separately, they all, both also have the 99 cents at the end. So then you save yourself a penny if you don't do it. I mean, and as Ben Franklin used to say, a penny saved is a penny earned. So just uh, food for thought. But I mean, you also save time by not having to download two things. So that's worth one cent to me. Opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is probably worth it. But what if you invested that one penny into like Microsoft, you know? Wow, I'd have two pennies. I know. Okay, Seth, talk to us about the other exciting things. All right. In the spirit of trailers, there's also a new Secrets of the Jungle trailer, which is the movie coming out in Japan on the 25th and in the U.S. I think sometime in like March or something like that. I, f- I forget. Did they announce the time for Mar- for the U.S.? I haven't heard I think any they kind announced, of time frame for the U.S. They announced some time frame. Yeah. I don't remember what it is. It's later than I expected, though. But oh, uh, it's very is- late because it's, it's late in Japan this year, too. Um, yeah, and the thing is, like, it's just a TV. It's going to be a TV or a streaming release. Like, it was never going to be a theatrical. Yeah. Well, I, I, I honestly it if, outside Japan. Honestly, if I'm Netflix at this point, I would just be like, "Hey, everything gimme. Pokemon's here." Gimme, gimme, no. gimme. Yeah, exactly. Because they already got the anime. Like, one, I think it's a really good move for Pokemon because I really like having it on Netflix. I'm not going to lie. I agree. This is the first time I've been able to keep up with the Pokemon anime since, like, Johto and Hoenn. Without having to jump through hoops and all that kind of crap. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, because, like, I never had cable and I never cared. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to go to Cartoon Network to watch it, but, it, like, since it was on, like, Kids WV, I haven't been able to watch it like I have been with, uh, yeah. with it being on Netflix. They know their market, and that's an important thing, so that's good. Um, but yeah, new trailer for that's out. It revealed a couple more details. That's really it. Uh, over the weekend, so it's over now, there was also a shiny Squovit event, because I guess they're pushing that Pokemon. Squovit um, is the rarest Pokemon of them all. I hate that entire line. Uh, so, unless so that, it's ours. <laughs> unless it's in PTU and it thermonukes. A very big threat. <laughs> then I'm okay with it, but I hate that entire line otherwise. It's uh, it's weird. I also like yeah. that they named the guy Coco, but they already have a Tapu Coco, and it confuses me. But we can talk about that another day. <laughs> Let's see. So we're not going to talk too much about Pokemon Go news because that's in the topic today. But there has there is some other Pokemon Go news that we won't touch upon because otherwise this would be a two-page Pokemon Go segment. And I hate it. I played it this morning. I caught one thing. And then you I played it this it. morning? Yeah. Wow. So the, the news that we're covering in, uh, we, we've got the whole thing is Pokemon Go Beyond. I put like a weird thing. They've got like six things for it. Go it's Beyond stupid. this. Go Beyond. This is to go even further beyond. Thanks, Seth. Uh, so 
Go Beyond Super Saiyan 6 arrives. Uh, so Gen 6 arrives in <laughs> Go on December 2nd. Uh, we've got Froki, we've got Chespin, we've got Fennekin, we've got Bunnelby, we've got Fletchling, and we've got Litleo. This will probably actually make me want to play again. I'm not going to lie. Because I like those, the, I, Gen 6 is probably still my favorite generation. And I like all of those starters. I don't care what anybody says, <laughs> they can fight me. Um, and so, uh, those are all fine. Uh, Klefki will also be available in specific regions of France. Yay! Makes sense. Um. You can only have keys there, I heard. <laughs> That's where keys were invented, actually. Yeah, uh, I'm just glad that Is that, that little... true, though? It might be true. Not, not even a little. <laughs> I'm finding out. You see, they're only keys if they're from certain parts of France. And other places, <laughs> Otherwise, they're, they're lock metal unlockers. <laughs> That joke went over 90% of our <laughs> listeners' heads. The earliest lock and key device was found in the capital of ancient Assyria, uh, modern-day Iraq and Syria. So yeah, this France. Is, this is, this is yeah, historically fault. Yeah, I basically think this is France. Basically France. Yeah, basically. There is a mysterious one-star red e raid egg, but no additional information was given. I'm calling it now as Han Edge. Uh, a specific, That'd be cool. a, speci a special event to boost the spawns of Kalos Pokemon will run from December 2nd until December. I'm into it. That way I can catch my Froakie, Chespin, Fennelkin, Bettlebee, Fletchling, and Litleo. Bless you. Yep, yep. That's what, I'm all here for that. Uh, also, Go Beyond. Go Beyond is also it's having an event so until November 30th. Go Beyond Friendship. Friendship levels with friends will increase faster, and you will receive a bigger attack boost in raids with friends during that time. You will also receive more raid experience and can open a larger amount of gifts each day. Ooh. Ooh that's neat. Uh, it's okay. I mean, yep. I, I, feel like, I feel like that's like one of the more underwhelming things. Eh, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, I, it feels very, like, I, I don't know. I, for me, like, I'm a casual player, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, from a casual perspective, it's like, mm, okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, okay. cool, 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 yep. cool. Exactly. Uh, in other Go news, the Lake Legends event are back from November 24 until November 30th. So the day after this comes out, you've got a week to find them again. They're going to be in five-star raids for those people who forget the Lake Legends are Azelf, Mesprit, and Uxie. They're also not region locked this time like they were the last time. Which is neat. Uh, in addition to that... Some more things are appearing in the wild and in eggs. Those are Abra, Machop, Ralt, Psyduck, Goldeen, Magikarp, Surskit, Starly, Bidoof, and Shellos are in eggs and stuff. And Shiny Goldeen, the long-awaited queen, is that a is good available. shiny? It's no, but it's also Goldeen seeking Pokemon to which I have an irrational hatred. So, uh, <laughs> oh no, it's just super orange now instead of. I had a I had a beta fish once, so I'm okay to with Goldeen. Goldeen's okay. It's okay. <laughs> So if the Pokemon Go and Home celebration has begun on Friday and lasts until 10 p.m. local time on Monday, so if the day this comes out it ends at 10, Meltan can be shiny again, and there are many special spawns, timed research and special re field research to be completed. Slowpoke is also available. It's a shiny. Okay. And special avatar attire, including a Melmetal jacket, vest, shoes, as well as Grand Oaks glasses. They got available. them arrows on them, yo. Who was yo. Grand Oak? In? Grand Oak is the guy. Oh, that Oak, was the, is the guy yeah, at the beginning of Home. Yeah. You know, you know the guy that they should have just used Bridget again for that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. With Bill. the crazy arrow green glasses, yo. I'm here to take your Pokemon to their retirement. I'm home. really okay with it being Bridget because at this point they like solidified Bridget for like that kind of service because she was the one in Pokemon Box and then she was Pokemon Bank. Mm -hmm. And it would have just been nice to have her for Pokemon Home and just call it good. I agree with that. But oh well. Yeah, we can't get everything we want. Also, transfers available to everybody now. Like, it doesn't matter about your level, as we Yay. all predicted forever. Stop freaking out anytime Niantic only releases something for level 40s. It's just a matter of time and it'll get to you. Just making sure the servers don't collapse is all. <laughs> yeah, that's all they're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Remember when Pokemon Go came out and it was like a, it was a to coin toss if you could log in? Yep. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, that's what that was. Yelling at people in the park, walking around, I can't get in, neither can I! <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Seth, kick, uh, end it, end, end this, end this. Uh... You betcha. Well, guys, it's 2020, and it's rearing its ugly head again. Do you remember how we had all those pandemic-related bonuses that got taken away? Well, good quote unquote news is that they are back <laughs> and they will be until june of 2021 so take that as good or bad or medium 
temperature, lukewarm. Does news. Niantic know more about the vaccine than we do? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. I think they're just hedging their bets at this point. Like, yeah, it was bad PR when they took it away. In my opinion, it was bad I agree. PR. That was really bad. But it's here now for another seven months. So yes, yay. Yay. Also, in Puckle news, uh, Fall League is still going on BT dubs. Make sure you go get those badges. Cloud9 and P. McGee are also doing weekly battles against the gym leaders, and I think they're winning all of them. So you can pretty much just, like, take no. their teams. Uh, are they not? Who who beat nope. them? I believe it was Liger completely uh, thrashed them. I can believe that. Never mind. That makes nice. sense. So, yeah, you can check those out. The battles against Coil and Dr. Shamu are coming up later this month. So, yeah. Keep it. Keep your eye out for that. Speaking of Liger, we're going to go to Poke, Puckle's Poke Quiz. Where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Today, Linian and Seth are going to be operating as a team. I don't know if that's good or bad. And we'll try to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions from our Discord server. You can submit your questions over in the Trivia Submissions channel over on Discord. They uh, try to answer them. There's a possible total of eight points because of shenanigans. Uh, some po questions are worth more than one point. Some aren't. They also have a lifeline and a hint that they can use to try to get the answer if they're having a rough time. If they don't use the hint and get all of the questions correct, they can uh, cash in for an extra point at the end, which is included in the part of the gate. So we are going to jump right on into it, though. Right after I say they're competing against their fellow co-host in a race to 30 points, whoever gets there first gets a $20 credit to PokemonCenter.com. Also, this is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com, your one-stop shop for anime nerd something needs. They gave me a thing to say and I keep <laughs> forgetting it. Um, but they also give you a uh, discount code if you go over to AnimeGravy.com and use code PokeQuiz at checkout. You'll get a, like a 20% discount. So go over there and buy all the things. So with that said, let's jump into it. Our first one is going to come from Backslash. What is the only non-water evolutionary line that gets the ability Damp? The only non-water type Pokemon that gets the ability Damp. For some reason, Parasect comes to mind, but I don't think that's correct. Because it's got to be, like, something gross. Something wet. <laughs> something moist. Moist. I would believe that the gross little caveman Parasect gets it. <laughs> I... <laughs> Sure. Uh, I can't think of any, like, non-water-type frogs. Venusaur. Um, other than that one. Is there any other, like, mushroomish thing that gets it? None of the other no. mushrooms get it. No, because I know the other mushrooms' abilities. What would Parasect's abilities be? It's got dry skin. Hypercutter. Yeah, I'll just say it, Paris. I think it's that. I think it's them. So you're going with Parasect? Yeah. Or the Paris yeah, line sure. in general? That is correct. It is the Parasect line. Uh, Parasect's abilities are Dry Skin, Effect Spore, and Damp. Aha, uh -huh, um, Effect Spore, not Hypercutter. Yes, <laughs> uh, it's PG. also not in Gen 8 anymore, so who cares, right? Yeah. I don't think it even gets Hypercutter in PTU. <laughs> nah. the, the note that Liger gave me was Rip Clawed at the bottom. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rip Clawed, never forget. All right. Our next question is going to be from Disco. What type has the most unique type combinations? I guess this is uh, this means how many types has it been paired with? Like which type has been paired with other types the most? Oh, and it's flying. Yeah, it's flying that's got one in well, every flying, type. There's flying in another type. Oh no, no, no. The three. answer it's unique. What? I don't know what this question is. So, like, remaining unused type combinations? So, for instance, uh, like, how no. many of them are surskit like where it's bug and water? I guess, yeah. I That's... think it's like I think it's like that. How many Seth, of there, one there type... Are a lot of, how many of, of one course. type combination with this type Contribute exists? to a unique typing. Yeah, so it's only one Pokemon has it. So, flying just by law of large numbers... I, I guess, like, one evolutionary line, we should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I follow. Figure. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. So the answer wouldn't be flying. <laughs> yeah, no, because, yeah, I, I, I think I understand it. Um, part of me wants to say dragon, ghost, or dark, 
Or maybe fairy, honestly. There aren't a whole lot of those. Is it most Pokemon... Uh, oh, dear. Individual evolutionary lines that have unique typings have this type most often. Yeah. Would it be normal? Because I can't think of a lot of duplicate normal X types. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like normal electric, heliolisk, normal no- water, Badoof. Normal fire, the Litleo line. I mean, yeah. I can't think of multiple... Um, there's like two normal psychics, and that's like Meloetta and Girafferig. Normal fighting, Meloetta. O- or Beware. So, But like by and large, there's just really not a lot of duplication there. I would say normal. Hmm. Yeah. I would feel most comfortable with that. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that... I, yeah, let's do it. Normal. Normal is unfortunately incorrect. Oh, the damn. answer is ice. Ice ground in Mammoth Swine line. Uh, uh, ice grass in the Obama Snow line. Ice dragon in Kirim. <laughs> ice fighting in Crabominable. <laughs> ice ghost in Frostlass. Ice fire in uh, Darvanitan. Ice fairy in Galarian Mr. Mime. No, uh, Alola Ninetales oh, too. Oh, wow, that one doesn't count. Oh, this was a bad question. Disco. And ice Psychic is, uh, I, is um, what's its name? No, Ice Psychic, I haven't said. There's no Ice Psychic. Um, th- yeah, they're not counting but, uh, that. Ice Dark is the Weavile line. Ice Rock is the Ice Rock type that exists that I don't know what I'm thinking Amara. of. Amara. Yeah. Dang. Ice Bug okay. in Snom, yeah, we... and then Ice Steel in Alola and Sand Slash. Okay. That's fair. It makes sense. Dang it. It's just ice it's ice psychic in Mr. Mind, so never mind. The fairy counts for Alola and Ninetales. Um Yeah. So there we go. Yep, yep, yep. Good for us. Ye all right. So your next question is your Pokedex an- entry. All you have to do is you're gonna get a Pokedex entry. You're gonna tell me what the Pokemon is. If you're riding the struggle bus real hard, I'll shove a second entry down your throat. If you get it on the first entry, you get two points. If you get it on the second entry, you get one point. If you don't get it at all, you get no points, as would the rules would suggest. <laughs> All right, so uh, this question is from <laughs> Slow King Braveheart. Its Pokemon Shield entry states, This Pokemon has a kind disposition, but if it's provoked, it will threaten opponents with shrill cries before attacking them without mercy. Who's that Pokemon? Shrill cries, kind disposition. Um, so it's a sound, like, Audino comes to mind. Because peaceful disposition and then uh, audio mm-hmm. cues. Mm-hmm. None of the Hatterene line, because they won't wait for you to be angry to beat the crap out of you. But they also don't make noise. Yeah, they like it quiet. Um, Kind disposition, shrill cries. Ah! Is there like a motherly bird? No, I don't think so. Not that applies. Can fish scream? Can a mola mola? A loma mola. That's not even That's not in shield, so it it can't... Oh, right. No, uh... I know that because I was looking for a wish passer on a recent team, and that is not in shield. Ne- Nido Queen, maybe. Maybe I don't. All know. right, riding the struggle yeah, bus here, team. Let's yeah. just take another one. It's Pokemon en- Emerald entry states. It hums in a beautiful soprano voice. It flies among white clouds in the blue sky. It launches oh. intensely hot fireballs from its mouth. Altaria. It's Altaria. Yeah. Altaria is correct. <laughs> you guys get one. You guys are two for three right there. I like its Japanese name better, Tiltalis. Oh my gosh, these all have a lot of answers. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> all right, so this next question has uh, six answers. For every two answers you give me, you'll get a point. It is from okay. MOMO. And MOMO wants to know, who are the six Pokemon that have at least one base stat in the single digits? Six Pokemon with a base stat and single digits. Are these fully evolved or pre-evolved as well? Both, yes. Shedinja, Munchlax, uh, Hapini, Chansey. That's three or four. That's four. That's five. Pukamuku. That's six. That is three points for you guys. You guys are five for four now. (laughs) Whoa. Wow. Did not take us even ten seconds. (laughs) You guys figured it out. Wow. Uh, good on you guys. <laughs> well, it makes up for those other answers. Yeah. Um, all right. So now I guess the question, this is going to be from Liger himself, the man who compiles the trivia. Yeah. This is your base deck question. And he wants to know, what is the fire type Pokemon with the highest base speed? I mean, it has to be at 137 because that's, uh, oh no, it's, it, that, Blacephalon isn't 137, it's like 137. No, it's, Blacephalon's 109. Oh, right. Mega Blaziken comes to mind. Talonflame. Talonflame has 126. 
Mega Blaziken by itself is not fast. No, it's just 100. And, yeah. Yeah, that's right. What happened in Jenny? You do have the hint as well, by the way. Which we can and kind of need to use. Yeah, let's just use it. Let's just double check. we got a question Town wrong. Flames, my forerunner. This is a dual type Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This Pokemon also has two forms. Oh, it's Galarian Darmanitan. Zen oh, yeah. Mode. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Darmanitan. Because it goes up to like, what, 140 or something? Yeah. Galarian Darmanitan with Zen Mode is correct. It's got a base speed of 135. The next fastest Jeez. is Talonflame at 126, and then Cinderace comes in behind that at 119. What's that Pokemon? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, is it even a fire type anymore? I don't know. Is it a yeah. fire type? <laughs> what move did it just use? Pyro Ball, dang it. You guys got six points. That's something. Yeah. You'll be surprised where that puts you on the la- on the tier list right now. Bottom. <laughs> uh. So, in first place, we have Whimsicott with 13 points. Oh my god. In second place, we have a two-way tie between P. McGee and Dr. Shamu at seven. In a five-way tie for fourth, Whoa. we've got Sublime, Claude Nine, Jashiro, Linian, and Seth Vilo, all with six points. Our Sigma and Basket have yet to get on the board. <laughs> but that is it for this segment of Poke Quiz. It's still anybody's game. We'll see what happens next time. So catch us next time. But until then, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back at you with the topic. We have another review this week from Burton Fly, and he says, Good podcast. I love this podcast. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Burton. And if you, too, have an iTunes review, you can drop it all over on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. You can also go ahead to anywhere else you listen to the podcast and leave us a review. We really appreciate it. Uh, So, yeah, we are going to move on now to the topic. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be Pokemon Go Beyond. Uh, We talked a little bit about this with the friendship because it was an event. And them calling it Beyond is stupid. There are two other factors to this. There's uh, uh, One is very nice, and the other one's like kind of like, okay, in my opinion, at least. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Go Beyond in, in Seasons is very cool. I, or I guess there were four things. There was Go Beyond Friendship, Go Beyond Generation 6. Yeah, Go Beyond in general. And yeah. then uh, there's Go Beyond 40, which we'll talk about in a second. But Go Beyond Seasons, I think, is really cool. Beginning December 4th, Pokemon Go will begin to run in three-month seasons, which will mirror real-life seasons. And so Deerling's going to come out, and it's going to change its form based on seasons, which is really ah, cute. I'm so excited! That's kind of cute. I'm I'm kind of into that. I love Sauce Buck. It's so cool. The first game we've acknowledged that Deerling has other forms since Gen 5. Yeah. To be fair, Deerling wasn't in Gen 7. It's not in Gen 8. It Well, it wasn't catchable in Gen 7. In uh, Gen 6, there was like one place to catch it on an, on an island in Oraz, and that's it. <laughs> like, we, we complain about Perugly not getting love. Deerling's kind of on the cusp there, too. <laughs> we can't figure out how to do seasons. We don't know what we're doing anymore. They just need to figure out a way around it in the main games like they've done with Magnazone with Thunderstone. You know, you know what I'm telling you right now? Like you add like one more DLC area into Sword and Shield and you can have one form in the base swish. You can have one yes. form on Isle of Armor, one form in Crown Tundra, one form on the new yes. place. Yes, Tundra Summer. So <laughs> what what fall world can we do? Exactly. Okay, yeah. ideas now. It's just Ecritique City, but fun and violent. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> One city in Jojo. No, if it's just like, hey, you get to go to Ecritic City and chill out in the airport because you can't get out, but it lets you evolve like coughing to wheezing. <laughs> like normal because you're not in the region anymore. You know, like the wormholes. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Uh, the thing I like about these seasons more most of than more than anything else, actually, is specific Pokemon will start to spawn more regularly during the related seasons like Darumaka in the summer. I love that for a lot of reasons, because I think it's really poopy. They instituted weather, but what if you live someplace that never snows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're never getting any ice types. I like that they that the seasons will kind of fix that issue without them having to shove more events down my throat. Mm-hmm. They still will, but you know. Oh, no, no, there's going to be more, there's still going to be events, but I mean, it's going to make it better-ish. In a sense, it also kind of reminds you to come back every couple of months. When the season changes, you're like, oh, shoot, I don't have a whatever, or oh, I want Mm -hmm. more grass or fire or whatever for summer. I could hop in for a couple minutes. Oh, there's a lot of things that are different. Let's see what's different. Blah, 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 blah. I like having different things. I think that's really cool. I really like that. And like you said, it's it's different. It's natural different, not forced different. You don't Mm -hmm. have to adapt to this every... You don't have to research what's new. You just know, okay, it's springtime now. There's probably going to be some more bugs. I'm a big fan of that, especially if they take the time and they divvy up the types between the seasons really, really well. 
And if they're starting Gen 6, I mean, there are a lot of Pokemon in that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And exactly. This will help make it more manageable to try to collect. And roll out as well. Well, they have to do something to make people keep playing because Gen 6 isn't like Gen 5 where they're just like, oh, we have Pokemon forever. Mm-hmm. Gen-, Gen 6, like, they have less than half the Pokemon they had in Gen 5 to like give out. 80 or something, right? 69. 69? Nice. Yeah, there's 69 Pokemon that were introduced in Generation 6, if I'm not mistaken. And some of them were even interesting. And some of them have, like, 50 forms. No, uh, Gen 6 is generally fine. Gen I 6, just... is, I thought, was pretty good. That was, like, the smallest generation they added Pokemon, but I thought they... That was when they started doing these smaller batches of Pokemon for Generations, but I would say, since then... More of the Pokemon designs, most of the Pokemon designs have been, like, good. Yeah, I just know that there's going to be a whole Spritzy and Swirlix event, and I just, I can't They're going to yeah. introduce them that. separately, like, they introduced Petlil and Whimsicott separately. Like, they did those separately. I, I don't understand that, but it's fine. Certain Mega Evolutions may see an increased CP during the related season. Presumably, things like Mega Gengar would be better in the fall. Yeah. Mega Raids will also better correspond to their season. It's so cool. I oh, love yay. that. Mega Raids. I, Mega, I don't know, Seth. Maybe you like Mega Raids, but I'm just still not a fan of it. I've never done one, but I like the idea of it being kind of also rotating. I like the idea of it rotating, and I like it rotating on a schedule that I know about. Yeah. Mm. That's what I'm getting at. I think that's my biggest th- problem with, like, just Pokemon in general as of late, is they're not being very transparent about their plans. Everything feels new. There's not something you can kind of set your own internal schedule on, you know? Exactly. And I, I, I enjoy this. That's going to be like, this is this seems like semi-transparency. Yeah. Between Sword and Shield and the events there and now the events going on in Go all the time, I'm kind of feeling inundated with news and it's kind of overwhelming. So I've kind of tuned out everything. So this being this being rotating and natural, it, it lets me <laughs> calm down a little bit. I don't know. I, I definitely like Go. Go is now like an information overload. And yeah. I like this because it's something that's just like, hey, guys, we're just setting this baseline now. Here you go. And I'm very, very happy about it. Go Battle Leagues will now last three months and correspond with the season for its timeline and rewards. That's kind of cool. This coincides with the change to 24 levels as opposed to 10 in Go Battle League. So you have to go to 24 levels instead of 10 levels. The first season is to be called the Seasons of Celebration and will feature multiple events. Who would have thought? And there will be a brand new global event experience at the conclusion of the season. I like that. Like, I see a lot of people complaining about, like, the Pokemon Go Fest, like, hey, pay us $15 to go do something. Mm -hmm. thing but i'm not against that especially like if you're really into the game yeah like i'm not against it yeah 15 bucks to go to go fest doesn't sound like a bad idea especially i also think that having go fest in one location was very stupid all of the time but that's just that's just a thatch thing literally now well yeah particularly now but i i think before this i think i think it was stupid i think one you can make more money by selling me a 15 dollar ticket regardless yeah sell it to the to the world instead of people within 100 miles of Chicago. Of Chicago. Yeah, exactly. Because they would always sell out, too. And it's just like, yeah. do you not want more money? Literally, just let me walk around my neighborhood and do this. Uh-huh. <laughs> How is it this hard to understand? <laughs> they wanted it to be an event. It wants to be special. a bad idea, but, you know. But now it is. Idea. Well, you already have, like, these really good community. Well, you you have these communities that <laughs> exist locally. <laughs> I'm not going to object to what Thatch did there. I, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Um, <laughs> Some of them are good. Some of them aren't great. I don't know. My favorite thing is there's totally a guy here in Dayton that, um, like this old Chinese guy, he runs around uh, and he has 20 phones all of the time. Oh, dude. <laughs> nice. You see him like driving his car and he like pulls up his like little rack of 20 phones dude. and he's like tapping it, doing his own raids by himself and stuff. It's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's some like crazy nonsense. That's awesome. <laughs> there are whales, and then there are leviathans. <laughs> I wouldn't even call him that. What I, because what I assume he's doing is he's selling accounts. That's what I assume he's doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I assume he's doing. Is he's selling accounts? But yeah, I mean, I like the seasons. I think Go Beyond Seasons is one of the cooler things mm-hmm. that that's happening in uh, in Pokemon Go right now. Now we do have Go Beyond Forty, which is the them increasing the level cap finally after five years. Has it been five years? Uh, it'll be five years in in June and July. Wow. Pokemon Go has had like a, a level cap for forty for si- since the game came out, and so leveling going into fifty, I think, is very appropriate because you have a lot of people who have leveled up to forty like five times already. Mm-hmm. 
and they, they have the experience points sitting there. I, I think it's cool because they are letting you still like hold on to that experience, but they found a way to still like slow roll you. So you can't just like blow to level 50 automatically. Yeah. Which is really nice. And I, I one, I don't really understand all of the things that come with it because I'm still sitting over here at level 37. <laughs> you and me both, my friend. I was just taking my time. Like, it was just like, what's the point of getting to level 40 and maxing out? I felt because like if once I hit that max level, I go, meh. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point of playing anymore, right? I can transfer everything to home. <laughs> even then, like, I don't even know that I want to transfer anything from go to home. There's, because it's just like, I already have those things. Mm-hmm. My biggest problem is just with the lack of access to legendaries. I don't like that legendaries are mostly tied to raids. That's my biggest critique of Pokemon Go. It makes sense, though. It makes sense. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that it makes sense. I want it to be illogical. I don't like that there's not like a route for solo players. Yeah. You know I what I mean? That. Well, there yeah. was, and it was called the freaking daily... Or the research the, test. The research thing at the end, I, I agree with you, and then they ruined it. But don't worry, you can get like a... a you can get a Togetic this month. Gross. So, yep, it's dumb. Yeah, a thing that I need an item to evolve. How yes. gracious. Yep, a Sinnoh Stone at that, right? <laughs> um, all right, so uh, they did introduce up to level 50 now. Um, they are rolling out, rolling it out, and it requires players to complete certain tasks to level up as well as experience, uh, which is kind of neat. I agree. I think we only have everything that gets you up to level 46 right now um, because this is like an ongoing process still. Yeah. But if you're at level 40, um, it takes 6 million experience to go to 41, but you also need to power up a legendary Pokemon 20 times. That's actually a pretty big task. Oh, oh no. You need a lot of rare candy. Thank goodness I've been storing those. Uh, you need to win 30 raids on top of that. You need to catch 200 Pokemon in a single day, which I guess is just like one of those days where you're just like, I guess I'm going to sit down and do this. And you need to earn five gold medals. But I think most of us have probably already done that. I feel like you earned five gold medals by then. As a reminder, the uh, the part of the COVID things is that incense works better. And that'll be going until June of next year. So this catch 200 Pokemon in a single day. If you have incense sitting around, do it then. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. So, I mean, that one's not too bad. Going from 41 to 42, 7.5 million experience. You need to evolve Eevee into each of its unique evolutions. Which really, you can't do the nickname control more than once, right? Yeah, like, you can't do nickname control thing. more than once. You can do um, you can do Leafeon, Glaceon, Umbreon, and Espeon controllably. Those you can control. And But to control them, you need cash items for... You do need items to... You can occasionally get them, I think. You can get them if you get collect coins through gym battles. It's like, if you get, if you maxed out for four days, you would be able to go get a, uh, you'd be able to go get, uh, what's it called? Uh, like a lure. A weather thing, yeah. You, you go get one of the lures. But then, even then, Umbreon and Espeon, you just walk with them for free. Mm-hmm. And you get it. So, it, it's reasonable. Uh, you also have to use 200 berries to help catch Pokemon and make three excellent throws. And use Easy. items to evolve Pokemon 15 times. Wow. Wow, actually. At least it puts the Pokemon... Like, I have so many of those evolution items sitting in my bag. Yeah. That it makes me feel good for not throwing them out. <laughs> yeah. But, like, these are difficult, in a sense. The, no, they're they not, will they're take not easy. Time. Yeah, they're not easy. Mm-hmm. It gets worse. <laughs> Nine million experience to get to 43 from 42. Um, you need to earn 100,000 Stardust. You need to catch... 200 you need to use 200 super effective charged attacks oh catch five God. legendary pokemon and earn five platinum medals i wonder if the count starts when you reach level 42 or if you've caught five legendaries up to that point it'll just i don't know off. that's I a good that one doesn't reset yeah that that one because might be the... new but something like earn five platinum might be just yeah if it happened yeah that one i can see being reflect um uh, but yeah but whatever the word is yeah retroactive um thank you yeah Oh, 43 sucks. Um, 43 to 44 sucks. 11 million. sucks. Um, win 30 trainer battles in Great League. That's okay. Great League's not bad. Great League is probably the most balanced. Um, win 30 trainer battles in Ultra League. Okay. Win 30 trainer battles in Master League. Oh, God. <laughs> and then win 20 trainer battles in Go Battle League. Yeesh. And then there's also uh, 13 million after that. Defeat 100 team Go Rocket oh Grunts. Oh, my God. Purify, Purify 100 Shadow Pokemon. Sh- oh my defeat, god! Defeat a Go Rocket Leader 50 times and get 10 Platinum Medals. Well, this is cool. This tells me that the Rocket thing is staying. Like, the rocket I always thing, had it in the, my the head rocket, that it was going I away. I like it. I like the Rocket thing. I get slightly annoyed logging in every single time and there's always a hot air balloon above my there's head. There's always that a balloon. annoying. For 15.5 million to get to 46... 
It's complete 100 re- field research tasks. Actually, not that bad. No, yeah. that's that's totally reasonable. I like the idea of grinding through them because, like, I always feel like, hey, I did one for the day, but these are all super easy. Yeah. I, I also think research tasks were one of the better things they added to Go. Uh, I'll be completely 100% honest. 100% agree with you. Yeah, it gives you yeah, reason no, to play not. every day. Yep. Yeah, zero objection. Take a snapshot of a Pokemon seven days in a row. Okay, Aww, I th- I think cute. that feature is stupid. Uh, make That's fifty what's excellent throws. Too, you can tell because they don't have anything after that. Yeah, so it's because they <laughs> wait. That's the hold up. That's the bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah. Make 50 excellent throws and then hatch 30 eggs. But that's the bottleneck right now is the seven days in a row thing. So that's why we know nothing else. So come back to us in a week. We'll have the rest of these, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Uh, (laughs) Oh, man. 49 to 50 is make 50 excellent throws for seven days in a row. Ah! Catch 200 Pokemon with excellent weather boosts uh, uh, every shit. day. I mean, we have like general requirements. It's kind of weird. Like you, I don't know. We have general requirements. The other things they added that I don't completely understand are Pokemon Candy XL. I don't understand. So so let me explain it to you, Thatch. Yes. They decided that uh, th- that um, some Pokemon, they, ha- they had two problems. One, Pokemon trainers had candy and nothing to do with it. Yes, and, uh, that's me. And two... Uh, they had people who had Pokemon that were that while the trainer was casual and didn't play a whole lot, they ended up dying in raids because they couldn't have Pokemon um, strong enough to participate with the content because they were making it for their level 40s. So what they did is they created a, a solution that would remove candy from the economy by turning it into this and solve two problems. One, it would let people who are more casual play with their favorites because they'll have a lot of candy for that. They'll power up this thing beyond uh, a normal Pokemon. That's what it lets you do. It lets you go above. The, oh, your, so it just increases CP. the level cap for the Pokemon? Increases the CP cap, yeah. Yeah, it increases the CP cap. Temporary. Okay. And, it, and then for the whales, for the like level 40 plus uh, and eventually level 50 guys, what this will do is create an eternal Metapod measuring contest, shall we say. No, you're uh, exactly right. You're, no, that is, a, that is an absolute My Mewtwo absolute is truth. basically its own raid boss. Blah. So, so <laughs> it, it actually, I don't love it as a solution, but I have to admit it solves two problems at once. Wait, so what's different yeah. about it? So, so explain to me the fun. I understand it's a hundred regular candy to make a candy XL. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you use that one candy XL to bump your CP as if you leveled up, but your level stays the same. Okay. That makes more sense. Is it permanent? Yeah. Oh, I thought be. it was temporary. Look at me being dumb. That's cool. I'm into that it. That is cool. I'm going to have a Sableye that is the destroyer of worlds. Right. I'm so into it. It lets you take one Pokemon, especially easier on common stuff, and just god mode it. And that's, yeah. that's the whole point. I'm into it. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. I, I've just been confused about that one because like, everybody's like, oh, Pokemon Excel. And I'm just like, I don't know what the difference is but okay <laughs> that is me okay i see so before you could only get to power up level 80 well it was po- it was your level so it'd be level 40 well it says 80 on here uh, i'm looking at Cerebi, um but it could be 40 oh your level is 40 but i think pokemon levels themselves yeah, actually like tapped out at like yeah. 37 yeah because it, it's your level doubled is what you could yeah and so, okay to. so that's why 77 to 88 okay i understand now yeah and so but now to go even farther you, you have to use candy excel and a bajillion mm-hmm. stardust oh my gosh that's a that's a lot of candy excel you need too it's like 10 candy excel that's not a little bit of candy wow yeah, yeah. that's a no. thousand candy okay i yeah. i'm not a fan <laughs> yeah i think it's cool it's a neat idea. I in practice I think it's too I think I think Niantic has been really bad at like calculating cool how terrible in practice. I well I think so like okay, so the idea is we you can power up your Pokemon past the max level, right? Cool. The, it went from four candy to to level them up from one level to another. And then now it's just like, oh hey, by the way, it's instead of four candy, it's gonna be a hundred. <laughs> and I'm sitting over here like, mmm, the scale. The scale there. And they're just like, no, no, Thatch, we're right. You're wrong. I like I could see it being like one XL candy to at the start and then like cranking it up to like four XL candy. But I mean, at some point you're getting to like or two thousand. No, no. A, oh, yeah. No, it's a thousand candy. Not even a hundred. I am wrong. Um, That's even worse. Niantic. Fix it. Strong. I just need them to fix it. I want them to f- make their game better and not poop. <laughs> that's all I want. Please make your game not poop. 
Like, it, but if you that's, get them, oh no, that's a bad. That's well, bad. IMO. I think that's bad. And when you get them to the maximum thing with that, then it removes the cost of transferring away. That's Does not it a fact, or no? Be, no? No. Are you sure? It's not going to. If it could, that would be hilarious because they'd be making you make these ultimate powered Pokemon, then getting them immediately out of the ecosystem. I think that. Uh, I don't know. Like, Go, Go's just been really bad at, like, being like, hey, what's, like, a reasonable number we should put on a thing? A million. And some guy goes, ten. And they go, ten. Ten candy. Ten candy, each requiring a hundred candy. You're a genius, Greg. And Greg's like, no, I said ten. And they said, yeah, yeah, we heard you. And they walk <laughs> yeah, away. <laughs> Poison for Cusco. How how long should we how long should it take to recharge the Pokemon home thing? Oh well it's a week. What? <laughs> ten. <laughs> what? Ten, ten weeks. Ten weeks. We should have ten thousand energy, but it takes seven days to recharge it. Uh uh I just feel like they're really bad at it. I just feel like they're really bad. Uh how many how how, how long should we let Mega Evolution last when you have Mega Evolve a Pokemon? Four. Oh, four hours? No, I meant like four days. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, four hours. That's what no, we're going with. No, I meant four, four, forever. You cut me off before I could finish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole thing's a mess. Uh, I, like, I, Pokemon Go's trying. I'll give them that. Um, like, they're doing some good things. Like, this year, like... They're trying, but they're trying my patience. <laughs> I can say that, like, I, I, I'll poop on them from stuff that they put in the game since, like, September. But before that, I think they were doing great. I thought I thought their COVID response was phenomenal. I thought the way they handled GoFest this year was really cool and really great. And that's the way GoFest should always be forever and always. Uh, but like it wasn't until like Mega Evolution, it was just like, OK, you guys are trying to get me to buy remote raid passes. And then they took away the pandemic stuff. And then they're just like, oh, hey, Pokemon Go transfer. And then they're just like, hey, level 50, but it's stupid hard. <laughs> hmm. Mm. kind of how i feel right now but it's like it's just like misstep after misstep but they did reinstate the pandemic things like we were talking about in the news yeah which is good they needed to yeah and they should they absolutely should um i think it's i think honestly it's immoral to not do it yeah at this point right now yeah yeah i think it's immoral to not but that's just me uh overall though i think these are cool i'm kind of hoping my antic at least on like the pokemon leveling thing like rolls back a little bit i like the idea of levels being hard to get though after level 40 Mm-hmm. I like that idea. I think it's a good place to wrap up. I think it's an overall okay thing. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I feel pretty meh. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip flop. <laughs> And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 486, Regigigas, the colossal Pokemon. It is believed to have shaped Regirock, Regice, and Registeel out of clay, ice, and magma, according to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. No one knows where the other two came from. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody ever. Regigigas, you're such a silly Pokemon. All right, so Regigigas is, I mean, he's Regigigas, and his stats are pretty decent. He's got a base stat total of 670. Fun fact, same amount as the Calrex forms. <laughs> Which uh, just goes to show how busted those are. I mean, his his stats are spread pretty evenly, too, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice. Like, base HP of 110, base attack of 160, base defense of 110... Special attack of 80, special defense of 110, speed of 100. So, like, it's decent all around. The biggest thing hankering it down is its ability slow start, but we're going to talk about how to get rid of that today in VGC. But the slow start is unfortunately its only ability. It has no hidden ability. You can't get rid of it. It sucks. Regigigas eggs. <laughs> it just exists as a Pokemon to be caught, I think. <laughs> I like to imagine that. All right, but there are some things to talk about, so let's jump right into it. Our team this week is a VGC team, as it is the month of Fall League, so we wanted to take some time to talk about some uh, VGC strats in Season 7. And this is probably one of the bigger ones that's like a meme that's going around. Uh, this team, I believe, was actually made by Coil Builder on the on the Discord server. But this is a Regigigas Weezing team. So you have your Regigigas with its slow start, holding a life orb. 252 attack, 4 special defense, 252 speed. It's running protect, giga impact, high horsepower, and ice punch. To get round slow start, which has your attack and speed for the first 5 turns, Regigigas is out. You bring a Weezing with neutralizing gas. This is a normal Cantonian Weezing. 
and I've talked to Coyle about this particularly, like why he chooses regular wheezing over the more common, in my opinion, I believe it's more common than Galarian wheezing. Mm -hmm. And uh, regular wheezing doesn't have a steel weakness, so Mm. he likes to run it without the steel weakness. The defensive stats are essentially the same. Yeah. And so this is a wheezing holding a Shookaberry because it's not levitate, it's neutralizing gas, so it can still be hit by ground type moves. And it's got a 252 HP, 4 special attack, 252 special defense, calm nature, taunt, will o wisp sludge bomb, and protect. It's pretty standard fare mm-hmm. for a Weezing. And so the idea is you just go big with Regigigas and you have Weezing out and you protect and you just let Regigigas go ham for three turns at least. <laughs> yeah. Because it's yep. actually really hard to kill Weezing. It's really hard to kill Weezing, surprisingly. Fair warning, when Weezing goes down... Slow start kicks in. Yes, that's what it starts. it doesn't count the turns. Yes, it doesn't count the turns you've already been out. No ability kicks in until Weezing is down. And it's actually really cool to play that Weezing against stuff like Rillaboom. Mm-hmm. Because then Rillaboom doesn't get its grassy terrain. It's really nice. Yep. I know Seth is t- absorbing all of this. Yep, a little bit. This is a little different than how my brain works, so. It is, yeah. OU versus VGC are two completely different worlds. Yeah, which is why they gave me the two friendliest to OU Pokemon on this team. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we've got a Rotom Heat holding leftovers, which baffles my brain. It's got 252 HP, 252 special attack, 4 special defense, modest nature, so just max HP, max attacking. And Well, we, we have item limits in VGC, Seth, you right. see? So, well, no, it's not that. It's just that it's n- it's not wearing shoes. We don't need shoes. How do how do you have a Rotom Heat with that without, without shoes? My brain. Anyway, I've never I've never had to use shoes ever uh, <laughs> this gen because I haven't played OU. <laughs> yeah. So its moves are Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Nasty Plot, and Overheat. Pretty good defensive Rotom, and it can set up itself and go to town. Does Overheat hit both things? No, no, it's no. not spread. It's not spread. I couldn't remember. It's, it's single target. Okay. I could not remember, and it doesn't get Heat Wave or anything like that. No, because so, right? it's only Fire Move is the the microwave. Rot- Rotom is like one Pokemon that's just always been good. I love Rotom. It's my favorite electric. Like type. ever since it got its forms, it's been good. Yeah. Well, I'd say Gen Five. Gen Five actually, not Gen Four. Rotom when it was still Electric well, Ghost the entire time. It was time. still good. It was a good Scizor counter, which was needed at the time. Once it got its types, it was good. That's what exactly. I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the other friendly to OU Pokemon here is Urshifu, which is going to be the... Uh, dark variant? Yeah, the single this strike is the dark variant. One. This is the yeah. Wapa one. I yeah. had to make sure. Uh, it's not running band, the Wapa move, though, which is confusing to me. Yeah, that's why I had pause. I was looking for that move specifically. <laughs> Obviously, Unseen Fist is the ability lets it bypass Protect, which is really handy in VGC formats. 252 attack, 4 special defense, 252 speed, jolly nature, and its moves are Sucker Punch, Close Combat, U-Turn, and Iron Head. Pretty simple, pretty standard. It mm-hmm. beats things to a pulp. Yep, Notably, yep. when it Gigantamaxes, even though it doesn't have Wicked Blow, it still gets the Protect and Max Guard Smashing Dark move off Sucker Punch. Yes. So yeah. you do have that, that option. Mm-hmm. Finally, last two rounding out, we have Reggie Alecki with a Focus Sash. If I have to tell you this thing's spread, why? Uh, 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed, 4 Special Defense. It's timid to outrun other Reggie Alecki. Does it need to be timid? That was going to be my point. Is it timid or modest? That's all you need to know. I think it's smart to have this one be timid to outspeed all of the modest Reggie Alecki, because most of them are just modest, because this one has light screen. Okay. So this one has screens, reflect, it has electro web, which is spread that slows. It's electric icy wind, except it can't miss, I think. Maybe. I don't know, off the top of my head. And then it's got Thunderbolt, because that's its most reliable move via transistor. And lastly, we have something near and dear to my heart. Neil Ego. It's got 4 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed. That'll be bumping its its special attack when it gets things knocked out, because it's got beast boost. It's got Dazzling Gleam, Sludge Bomb, and Protect, but you're probably going, wait, what's its health item? That's a Power Herb, because it's got Meteor Beam. <laughs> so It's the only other Pokemon I've seen run a Power Herb that's not Xerneas. Right? <laughs> I think this is the first time, like, because Nihiligo is actually, like, this this, this Nihiligo specifically is actually pretty popular right now in VGC. Yeah. Oftentimes they'll swap 
Dazzling Gleam for Power Jab. Yes. But both work. Yes, I agree with that. Meteor Beam gives you plus one special attack and then a massive stab nuke. You will probably kill what you hit with it, which means you're at now at plus two. Yep. And Dazzling Gleam is spread. Dazzling Gleam is spread. Good job, Seth. I know things. <laughs> go, go have a cookie. <laughs> Sludge Bomb is your main stab from there. Dazzling Gleam can spread, and if you get double KOs uh, off of something that's been weakened, oh boy, this thing can spiral out of control. <laughs> it's one point faster than Garchomp. It's speed. 103 speed, yeah. Yeah, it's 103 speed. So that Dazzling Gleam, if you're plus anything, is just going to splatter that, that Sand Dragon. So you don't have much to fear. Um, that'll also help you fight those Moltres. Yep, 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 yeah, especially the Moltres. Moltres is super popular right now. Mm-hmm. All right, but that's the team. If you want to try it out, it'll be over on the Thingamajigger, the Discord, and you guys can uh, take it for a spin. On that note, I think this is a good place to stop. We're going to kick it on over, though, to the mailbag. It's mail time! Send in your email. And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where you can send an email into pucklepodcast.com and can be around on the show. It's also brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Fictional hooves! And as always, we'll give a Green Tauros badge to an email we read if we think it's uh, good and it, and it inspires confidence. Uh, we received a lot of emails this week, a lot of them very off topic. I would like to remind people if they want to win the Green Taurus badge and get on the show um, to uh, actually write emails of substance and paragraph breaks and punctuation are always appreciated. With that said, we've got two emails to read today instead of three, uh, as we normally would. But I, I, we got more than three emails. I just like to point out uh, content uh, may be a reason why we filter. <laughs> if, if you're going to talk about U.S. tax law... Yeah, okay, so, uh, but our first email this week is going to be from uh, Krabby Snail. Yeah, Krabby Snail. Hey, Puckle, I have been listening for over a year now, and I love the podcast. My best friend and roommate got me into it. You should okay, be. pause, pause. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> one, I love, this is the thing that I've been wanting for my entire life in, in the mailbag, and he's the first person to ever do it. Before the email, before any of the content of the email, before the hey puckle, anything, he says, my name is Krabby Snail in the in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> so we know just ahead of time. Just so we know ahead of time. Like, that's, that's I've wanted right. that. It's been 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 2,000 years. <laughs> it's been 13 years, and that's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> But I digress. We can continue. <laughs> I love that the Pokemon Go transfer is finally here. I just started a new playthrough of Swords, the third one, which is always the best. Also, it's the first one post-DLC. I've only had enough energy to transfer five shinies, so I made sure to pick ones I had extras from, from Community Days or really low CP. Favorite mon I sent over was a shiny Eevee everyone got from that research task. It was a really great way to spice up the playthrough, especially not knowing which Eevee Lucian to have it evolve into. Um. I ended up using a shiny Trico as well and evolving the Eevee into Espeon. I also gave it an ability patch for it to have magic bounce. <laughs> shiny <laughs> Trico nice. is actually one of the best ones. That's oh, that's such a cool idea. Yeah, it's so cool. It's like, hey, I just took this Pokemon. Ability patch, done. Poof. And like being like, I caught this in real life and now I'm using it in my playthrough. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. That is kind of cool. Yeah. I picked Espeon because in my battle tower in Leaf Green way back then, these twin NPCs there used Espeon and Umbreon, and the Espeon was shiny. I remember that. It made me very angry I couldn't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that I wasn't surprised by the backlash with the week-long retrade. Blah, blah, blah. Week long recharge rate of the transfer box. But I found a way to make the most of the situation. It will take some time, but eventually I'll get those shine extra shinies transferred. Thank you for the podcast. Have fun, Krabby Snail. Your best friend and your roommate sound really cool. Totes. I think they're the same person, but uh, I like to imagine it's two other people. Like there's a best friend and a roommate. Two other listeners. Both of them recommended it. My advice remains the same. 
<laughs> my best friend i like that they i like that there's like two people living together and they're just they have a shared interest in my voice <laughs> hubris my hubris is growing uh, <laughs> that makes me very uncomfortable um, um, <laughs> they, they, right now they're just like oh we hate thatch now we, we only listen we only listen for seth it's like fireside chats <laughs> uh, gather around the radio kids and let's listen to the puckle podcast <laughs> do you think they get together we should have a podcast about the podcast <laughs> no like in like an after show no. you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's the puckle uckle the pokemon underground champions, champions league, league underground, underground champions, champions league. League. <laughs> exactly the puckle uckle that's what we need <laughs> Okay, that way that way you can get really into the host background. I'm getting physically tired listening to this idea. <laughs> That's good. It, you'll be more energized when you are actually part of that idea. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth, I'm going to make you get this next one from Skookum um or Mark on the uh on the Discord server. All right. <clears throat> Greetings, Puckle persons. It is I. Magistrate Mark of the Dunsparce Gang writing in again. I have many strong opinions about today's topic. I'll try and keep from being overly critical. Like most folks, I played Go at launch and had high expectations. It seemed like the Pokemon game I always wanted, marrying real-life adventure to finding and catching Pokemon. I remember how exciting the game was during the first few months, with people teaming up to find new gyms and catch rare Pokemon. I was working as a ranger at the time, and it was the first I and was the first person to find and take over a number of remote gyms. Whoa, whoa, whoa! He was a ranger. <laughs> Did he use the remote control top thing? Yeah, he actually Pokemon Go at that time had a feature where you had to spin in your order phone, to catch. Whip your phone around. <laughs> yeah, you had to spin in a circle in order to catch the Pokemon. A little top had, popped out of your phone, and you spun it around the cer- Pokemon in a certain number of times. It uses the gy- <laughs> the gyroscope <laughs> in your phone. <laughs> Now get out there and spin really fast. The antenna just forcibly extends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, goodness. We have a good time here. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, back to this. I embraced the opportunity to be the final boss hikers had to face at the top of a mountain or a scenic lookout. And it was cool <laughs> seeing all the new people out experiencing nature. That's so neat. That's a cool, that's a cool aside. That's a cool aside. Can you just imagine this? You convince your other four out of shape nerd friends who are super into Pokemon Go. You finally talk them into going on a hike because there's a remote gym and you get up there to see a rugged mountain man who (laughs) has been training Pokemon to defend this gym. I would be so entertained and simultaneously done with what was happening. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, Back to it. When the hype faded, I forgot about Go. Last year, I picked it up again out of curiosity, and I kept playing for one reason. The promise that one day I could transfer the Pokemon I caught to home, and they would all become real boys. In preparation, (laughs) I built out a living dex in Go. It helped provide purpose to logging in. I already have most of the Pokemon over in home, but it's nice to be able to fill out the gaps, especially middle evolutions and forgettable Pokemon that I've looking that I've looked over looking at you, Chimeco. Yeah. I might be in the minority, but I really like home as a tool, and right now it's the only option we have to collect all the Pokemon in one spot. One of the interesting things I'm seeing from having connectivity to go is that there's a greater diversity of Pokemon circulating in Wonder Trades. I also love the absurdity of having things like a level 15 Dragonite and a level 7 Electivire. I love it. Is that how the level transfer happens? What is it? I don't know. To? I don't know exactly now. Uh, let I, don't me look e- I don't know either. Keep going. I, keep going. Feel, yeah, I feel like it, everything's it. at level 5. Why not? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Some folks don't consider the Go Pokemon to be real and therefore inferior, but I'd like to point out that they are fully functional upon transfer to home. Unlike Let's Go, which has missing stats. Once I finish excavating, pardon me, evacuating the Pokemon I want or need, I plan on ditching Go for good. Pokemon Go is an extremely flawed, quote, game that is only fun if you enjoy endless grinding, terrible battling, and paying money to hatch eggs. With all that Go has done this year, it doesn't take much foresight to see the writing on the wall. Go is going to be increasingly monetized from here on out. 
Niantic wants to squeeze this product for everything they can before it fades into obscurity. I might log in for community days once in a while, but I see this as the end of my Go experience. I can't imagine that I'm alone. Catch you on the flip-flop, Magistrate Mark. That was harsher than I expected, but I don't disagree with a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, dis- I don't disagree at all. Um... Uh- <laughs> I'll probably still keep going because I'm an addict, but and it's fun. Like the the concept now that I can make a reality that I can catch a Pokemon in real life. I can take the Trico that I caught in the Sistine Chapel and play mm. with it in my game. <laughs> That's so cool to me. I get that idea of the concept. I so that so one uh, Seth, I don't disagree with that. I I do still have a problem with like all of the Go Pokemon not being able to like go to Sword and Shield, and I understand the reasoning. Yeah, uh, I like I understand the reasoning behind it. I, it doesn't mean I have to. I have to like it, but I understand it. <laughs> oh, by the way, that Trico's name is Trico Angelo because God, I hate you. Um, okay, <laughs> there's just so many things about you, Seth. I, we're friends. Let, let the record state. <laughs> let the record Thank state. you. You have to remind me every couple of days. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> it's fine. Seth DMs me sometimes and he goes, hey, by the way, I think you're kind of being an awful person today. <laughs> and so this is our friendship. It's okay. Usually at five in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. You're terrible. <laughs> Call me the hubris smasher. Seth is my uh, Seth is my almost moral compass. <laughs> and I'm your Jimmy Seth Cricket. Seth is your immoral compass. All right, no, I I mean I don't disagree though. Like I I think that uh, I think Go itself is like doing some crazy stuff, and I think they're worried because they don't have that many Pokemon left to add. Mm-hmm. I I think what will be Go's last hurrah is probably going to be at some point they might release a like a generation of Pokemon at the same time as a new game comes out. That'll be so cool. Like for, I that oh. worries me. That worries me a little bit. Like, Im- like you can't find the freaking bag on because it's in one spot in Gen Three, but you can find it in the park, and that's how you can get it. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so cool. No, that would be the worst because what that would happens be the worst. Is then Go goes defunct, and then you're replaying that later, and you're like, there was another way. Yep. Meh. Uh. Well, so my my worry is, and I I don't think. And looking at the the player base of Go and how it shrunk in the years in the past few years, like looking at the contraction, I I don't think they really will lean into Go as heavily as they did, uh, as they have been. I think because yeah. I think Let's Go I think Let's Go was an experiment to see how well they could make that work. And I don't think it. I, I don't hear think you. Let's Go wasn't a success. I hear you, and but as far as like Go Go itself, it, this was his. For for reasons, this was one of its most lucrative years. Oh no no I, I no no I, it's not no, going. It, it was anywhere. their mo- no it was one of their most lucrative years. I do agree with that. I I hate the idea that Pokemon will try to cater to the whales though, and not try to ca- cater to everybody else. I hear you. Yeah, that's my that's my concern. Yeah, I think they're they're getting that they're getting that balance. It's about finding the balance. They're working on finding that balance, and I yeah. I think the past five years has been very pokemon go heavy in ter- like uh, well maybe not the past five years i'd say everything after sun and moon yeah. was very pokemon go oriented like even like it it felt like they were just like hey pokemon go everybody should like it and well, like even they're... dynamax as a whole like really yeah i well i just feel like that's when really their focus um like let's go is a very obvious answer for that but i even yeah. think sword and shield to an extent they were just like yeah, yeah go go it's the hybrid sword and shield was the hybrid experiment between typical pokemon and go uh i kind of i the don't whole entirely gimmick is that. raids and i i agree raids kind of i but i i don't i think the way raids are handled in sword and shield is far better than raids in uh in right, go just yeah i wouldn't even say base raids are like fantastic in sword and shield though either i think dynamax adventures are far better mm-hmm Dynamax Adventures forever for life. <laughs> but I think they also know that now, like having done them. Oh, they absolutely know it. They absolutely know. I, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I'm very excited to see what 2021 has to in store for us for that. Uh, but do we want to give either of these gentlemen a Green Tauros badge? I want to make Mark work for it more. So no. <laughs> you want to make Mark work for it. Here's this already a 2000 page, 2000 character summary. <laughs> <laughs> give it to the poor man. Uh, do we want to give it to Krabby Snail then? 
Maybe sure. yeah, Krabby <laughs> Sale. You get the green sure. tourist badge if you ask us for it. Um, all right. So uh, on that note, if you want to email <laughs> us next week, let us know what you think of Pokemon Go going to level fifty uh, and beyond, among other things. Among to other things, level fifty and beyond. Yep. yep. And <laughs> let us know what you think. Uh, we'd love to. We'd love to see what you uh, what your thoughts are. And of course, you can uh, always. Send us an email at pucklepodcast at gmail.com responding to that. If you want to keep up with us throughout the week, the number one way to do so is by going to Discord and hanging out. That's where you'll get into the advent calendar and stuff like that. Um, you're also going to be able to go to um, – uh, you can go follow us on social media over at Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram. We can also go ahead and uh, – I appreciate that um but we can <laughs> <laughs> but we can we can i i'm losing my train of thought today we can go ahead and go to youtube youtube.com slash buckle podcast watch uh p mickey and claude nine go over to uh go and battle videos we you can go over to twitch.tv slash the puckle podcast and watch us play a variety of games including the poke the puckle showdown which is uh very exciting we should plan the second one at some point that was very fun and a good time and claude nine and p mickey are no longer to be on this allowed to be on the same team not at all. Ever. No. Ever. Like, it's never allowed. <laughs> it's never allowed. <laughs> Ever again. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then, of course, we can, uh, of course, if you want to uh, help support the show, you could do so in a number of ways. One, you can go over to, uh, you can go over to Twitch, drop a Twitch Prime subscription. You can go to Tee Public, buy a t-shirt or a tapestry or whatnot. Uh, throw pillows are very exciting. You buy a throw pillow. And you can, of course, go over to, um, uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash buckle podcast until the end of the month. If you sign up at the $15 tier, you get that coupon for a free set of, uh, of badges, uh, fall league badges. And personally, I really like the fall league badges. I think together they look really cool. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. You also get a puckle pin. Seth, you well, got them. Do you think they look pretty? I did. I think they're awesome. Yeah, I thought so. They look pretty. The puckle pins actually came out really nice too. I was really surprised by that. Mm hmm. But on that note, uh, I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been Seth Vilo. And I've been Lydia. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.